So what do Colorado Springs, Colorado, Sutherland Springs, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Antioch, Tennessee, and Charleston, South Carolina all have in common? They're all places where houses of worship became hot zones in an instant when shooters came in and started killing people at random. So today we're gonna to talk to an expert in the subject of church security, my friend Tim Miller. That's coming up right now on The Hot Zone. This is The Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Faith Baptist Church serves a semi-rural area of southern West Virginia. Pastor Larry Halsey has shepherded this congregation of over 400 for more than 20 years. Well, we recognize that although we're in a small community in southern West Virginia, that uh, we are living in a different time. We have been in our new facility for about five years now, and there was the increasing sense that we uh, have been unprepared to meet the challenges of, of the 21st century. We had some meetings and our leadership team recognized immediately the need to ramp up, to organize, which we had not really done. And we're very excited about what has happened in the last several months. We have a formal security team in place. Our people feel secure. After Linehart uh, came to the church and, and did the uh, uh, seminar, it made us much more aware of the areas that we really needed to start looking into. Our church really has, it's not a large church, we're a medium-sized church with 350, 400 members. We're located on approximately a 10-acre site. Probably a month ago, the high school uh, was broken in on a Sunday morning. But I, I would feel better uh, if we could uh, uh, grow our security team uh, to where uh, all the functions, anytime there was a function in the church, whether it be a wedding, funeral, or whatever, there would be security here. We have tried to institute a lockdown system where all the doors are locked down after the service begins, except the one door. Uh, that, uh, that makes anybody coming into the church at one point, it's easy to control, see who's coming and going. We have two stories, uh, the children's downstairs, so we, we have a security person down there as well uh, to, to make sure if, you know, if kids go to the bathroom, they don't wander outside. Uh, there's just so much more to the security that we hadn't thought of. Uh, another thing is uh, we have an older congregation uh, just this morning, one of the men, who's well up in age, uh, come out, was very weak, his sugar was dropping. Uh, so it, it, it made us a lot more aware of the health issues, uh, which goes along with the safety. Uh, we are continuing to upgrade our equipment and to just tweak our organization and the Sunday by Sunday uh, running of uh, the ministry. We don't have as large a security team as we want. We're working on it. Our parking lot is not huge, so you know, we can cover that uh, pretty much from the front. Uh, then uh, the next uh, security is in the uh, entrance. We usually have two people uh, in the entry in case one would have to leave or attend uh, to something else. We still have the security there. We have tried to not overcomplicate things. Uh, we just picked it, the, the radios we picked up was, was Midland radios. Uh, they're, they're an inexpensive radio uh, with the ear, ear pieces and things, but it does an adequate job. We're trying to cover all bases, but yet keep it as economically as possible. We see it as a work in progress, but we have some very capable uh, leaders who have stepped up uh, with a commitment to uh, the security of, of this church family. We've designated an area of the church for a triage uh, area in case something uh, uh, were to happen. Sometimes a simple medical problem, if it's not treated correctly, can make the situation worse. Our next big goal as far as the security team is to purchase and implement the security cameras. 
we have a situation where our school uses this uh, building a lot too. So it would help in activities where the students are here. From a legal standpoint, then anything that would be done, then you would have a, a uh, backup. We have found that this training is making a significant difference uh, in our church and ministry. This organization has just brought uh, a level of uh, understanding to our church family as to the time in which we live and the necessity of being prepared for whatever might be thrust upon us. Thanks to you, uh, you have, you know, you've opened our eyes up to just so many areas. I think so, so many times people in a church just take for granted, you know, that we was living 50 years ago. We're not. The church ultimately is responsible for the people that are worshiping here. Good to see you. I'm really excited to be here at Fort Lauderdale, or West Palm Beach, I guess. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your church and what we see behind us and how you are involved with all this. Yeah, so Chuck, you know, any security program, especially at a church, has to be tailor-made for the organization. Mm -hmm. So you think about a church, we're a church of about uh, 35, 40,000 over the weekends. We run 10 campuses. That's, so that's not in one place? That's... No, it's 10 different campuses across the spectrum. So we have uh, a campus out in the middle of farmland. We've got them right downtown. Well, with each campus comes unique security challenges. And you're head of security for all 10 campuses? That's correct. So you oversee the whole thing? I oversee the whole thing. Uh, typically, that's about 250 key volunteers. Uh, plus, I don't want to go into the numbers, but police and uh, and off-duty officers as well. Well, how did you get to this point? Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I uh, started out of college as a Marine officer, um, spent five years on active duty. Interestingly enough, was assigned to a Marine security force, protecting nuclear weapons. Um, graduated, uh, you know, from the Marine Corps into the reserves, into the real life, I call it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, jumped into law enforcement, was a police officer outside of Fairfax County, Virginia, and then ultimately a uh, Secret Service agent. And then um, left the Secret Service, worked drugs, counter narcotics with the Department of Homeland Security, and then retired as a director of training. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we, we met when you were working for... Uh Actually, you're just going to work for USFDA, I think. Yeah, actually, when, when we met, I was the liaison from Homeland Security into the FBI, if oh, you remember. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Office that's of right. Anti-Terrorism. So. Yeah, boy, that was a long time ago. Yeah, well, so you were a lot younger. Well, I didn't, I didn't and better looking. Like <laughs> well, anyway, uh, so we've been talking about church security, you and I, for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the state of security in the United States for our churches, uh, more than 76,000 churches around the country. Uh, I'm talking just evangelical ones. Right. And uh, what are you hearing as far as their their needs and uh, where they're at security? -wise? Yeah, well, you know, Chuck, it wasn't too long ago that churches were safe places. You know, you and I were raised, you never thought about violence in a church. Churches were, was where you went to make sure you were safe. Right. It's not the case anymore. Uh, obviously, we're seeing uh, dramatic increases, you know, in numbers of attacks, in uh, severity of attacks, doesn't uh, don't have to think long for the Texas shooting to come to mind, massacre in churches. So I think churches as a whole are beginning to wake up. Well, and there are a lot more attacks rather, other than the big ones that we hear about. I mean, yeah. You, I read that uh, you have some kind of security incident like that at, at your church almost every week. Yeah, we're dealing with a wide variety of security threats. You know, uh, when, when I first came here, uh, I, we security wasn't a high priority. Uh, unfortunately, it is now because uh, we're dealing with everything from domestic situations, child custody issues, to mental illness manifesting itself, to um, people that are just angry with the church for a variety of reasons. But if you think of any one of those three, it can become explosive just like that. And so the difference between, you know, when I was a cop and uh, as a Secret Service agent was, you know, law enforcement is largely reactive. You get a call, you go, you try to clean up the mess. Secret Service or security is proactive. It's all about making it not happen. So bringing that mindset, because a lot of churches will have detail officers, they call them. But at the end of the day, the officer's presence is not a security program. 
So it's really important that security in a church is designed around Monday through Sunday, not just weekends. Yeah. Interesting, a statistic you and I talk about all the time, uh, 60% of violent incidents at churches occur during the week. Yeah. So you got to be thinking about a comprehensive program. And, you know, churches kind of get intimidated. Oh, we don't need a big security program. No, you don't need a big security program but you need an effective security program. And that's where good men and women across the country, they just stand up. We just, it's time to protect our churches. When I'm talking to pastors, I don't do it with fear. Uh, their jobs is to be a shepherd mm -hmm. and they shepherd them spiritually. And all I'm asking them to do is think about the physical protection of their flocks. And most pastors are, hey, you know what? You're right. We do have to think about that. Well, a lot of people think that a church security program is basically uh, get a couple of concealed carry guys to stand out in the in the foyer, <laughs> yeah, uh, and and that's it. I mean, what, yeah. But uh, we can see when I follow you around here, it's a much more comprehensive, yeah, holistic uh, kind of whole of the church uh, program, right? Yeah, it's good. How you, how you so basically, it. when I work with churches, I remind them there are three things you got to have. If you want an effective member that Monday through Sunday security program, and that's the, uh, the right hearted team, man, if you put guys that want to be SWAT or, you know, MI6 into a church security program, it, it's a disaster because we're here to serve people. So you got to have that right hearted team, but then you got to marry that team with training. Church security is different. You know, we're going to approach people different. We're going to have conversations because the reality is we want broken people to come. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Not so in the Secret Service. You don't want broken people coming. But here we want broken people coming. And then you marry that good team with the good training with good technology, which is what you're seeing here. Because those three legs of the stool, man, and it doesn't have to be this big billion dollar thing. You know, you can go to Walmart and get a, you know, eight pack of HD cameras now, you know, children's ministry. Man, we're dealing with allegations in children's ministry. Well, it's pretty cool to be able to pull up a video and go, okay, now when did that happen again? Mm -hmm. And watch people go, oh. So church securities is as much about protecting the integrity of the organization mm -hmm. as just protecting people's lives. Yeah, I mean, the, the purity of the church is absolutely paramount. Yeah. And this is one way that you can ensure that. Yeah. Uh, both for good and for, for ill. But uh, also tell me about how you train. What kind of training are you uh, putting your people through? And what do you, uh, what would you say, suggest for a, a small church, you know, 100, 200 people? Yes. And, and I get asked that question a lot. Let, let me just say that I have a passion for training. One of the things I did when I was training agents was we had to review the videotapes of officers dying because we have that now with dash cam. And you realize that great training really does pr protect an officer's life and it protects an agent's life. If, if they can uh, learn how to think and how to respond and how to have skills in advance, when that crisis period comes, they're, they're ready for it. And so I, I kind of adopted that here. You know, how do we physically, mentally prepare way before an incident? That's one of the things I train, you know, uh, what happens in your mind and body? Because about 50 or 60 percent of my team, they're not law enforcement. They haven't had that training. Mm -hmm. So we start there and then we start with the skills that we desperately need. Number one, how to pray with people. Well, that's kind of an important skill to have because you may be that first point of contact. Yeah. But then we move into de-escalation techniques because that's 99.99% .99 of what we do. We talk about how to deal with the mentally ill. But then we also move into, no joke, active violence training. Our guys need to know how to respond, God forbid, if that shooter shows up at our campuses. And we train, train, and train some more because... You're only as good, you know, the equivalent would be a professional athlete. Can you imagine a championship team not training all the time? Yeah, especially it, because we've got, you know, these are our most cherished assets we're yeah. bringing to, to the church and yeah. our family. And I want to know that the, the church is protecting those people, is taking yeah. that protection seriously, and is doing what needs to be done to make them safe and not worried about the the political aspect of it or how it's going to look. Right. I want I want church security that is that is right full on when I bring my family. That's a good word. I tell our teams every week, they'll tell you, I know, Tim, that precious family that's walking in the door right now with that beautiful little girl and that little boy and they're leading them to the nursery. They're praying we get it right. Yeah. yeah Big responsibility. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim and I have been working together for some time, and uh, a while ago we created a series of 
church security training videos. And you can go and watch those training videos. As a matter of fact, for subscribers to the podcast, I'm going to give them a link to be able to preview that uh, and, and take a look at those church security videos. And I would highly recommend that you get those and that you share them with the security team at your church. And you go and ask your pastor, what, what, how, what's the right way to, you, to approach your pastor about That's a great question. your church security program? Yeah, again, I think it's not with a uh, pastor. Can I carry a big Glock or small Glock? I think it's all about, hey, this is an important function in the church. Um, we want to serve the body by doing this. We want to serve humbly. We want to serve people. Um, we want you to know it's not our job to keep people out. It's our job to screen people and make sure that the right people are coming in. If you're coming with a drug uh, habit, good come. We just want to get you to the place where you can get the help you need. I think most pastors think security is about keeping people out. It's not. Not at this church. This is about the stewardship of protecting God's people and places. And so I think when pastors hear that, it's a right focus. They're all in. They want that because ours is a healthy ministry. I mean, we have small group Bible studies. I mean, we just, it's a great ministry. And what we found is that this ministry attracts people who don't normally come and serve. Mm-hmm. Because you know, cops and military guys, they like yeah, they're they're. Mind but mind. but now all of a sudden they're with a, another group of warriors, right. and they're like, "This is pretty cool. We didn't know we could do this in the church." Yeah. And so it gives them purpose too. Well, that's great, and um, you know, it is just so important these days to do. So I, I appreciate the hard work that you're doing in in that Thank arena. You. And, uh, you know, you can look up, Tim, tell us where we can find more about your, your company. Yeah, so my company is Lionheart International Services Group. It's www.lhisg.com. Lionheart Lion International Services Group. Yeah. lhisg.com. Check it out. It's, thanks for being with us. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, thanks for all the good work you That's doing. it for today's Hot Zone. Thanks for watching. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media, copyright 2019.